Good day guys, Sir Prawn a lot here with another video. Uh today this is a bit of a different video. Uh, I won't have any footage of like real time footage of me talking and videoing. Um this is gonna be all recorded after. Um so I'm gonna pop some images up on the screen when I reference them and just see how it goes. Uh so today I'm gonna be talking about keeping shrimp with fish and how you do it, uh if you should do it. Um, who, like, does it, and I guess, you know, why you might want to. So in my opinion, there's about three different views or ways people would keep fish and shrimp. Uh, the first being just keeping shrimp on their own for breeding or whatnot, or just for having shrimp. Uh, second being having both fish and shrimp together in an aquarium, like an aquascape, or even just like a breeding tank of something. And the third would be just keeping fish, whether you don't want shrimp at all or the fish you have can't live with shrimp because they're predatory and they will eat all your shrimp. Um, so I'm going to go into depth on each subject and talk about the pros and cons and, um, yeah, if it works and, yeah, what, what you want to do there. So the first view I'm going to look at is keeping shrimp on their own for breeding or just as shrimp on their own. Um, if you are keeping them for breeding, you're not going to want fish in the tank because that can obviously lead to extra shrimp deaths. Um, fish will pretty much eat anything that fits in their mouth, uh, whether it be a baby or an adult shrimp. They'll just gobble it up as they see fit and chase it around or whatever. Um, so yeah, if you're trying to breed you know, your crystal reds or your crystal blacks with the nice patterns or even just neocaridina for the hard colours like blue or red, um, you obviously don't want your babies dying because those babies may have that colour you're looking for. Um, you also don't want your babies dying because, you know, if they die, you're losing your <laughs> babies and your offspring from your next generation and it'll slow up everything. Um, so I wouldn't suggest keeping fish if you're dedicated just to breeding them. Obviously, if you're doing a shrimp tank where you want lots of shrimp, doesn't matter about the colours or whatever, you just want lots... Um, you could keep fish with them, um, you will still lose some babies, but as I'll talk about in the next section, there are ways to obviously combat that. So the next topic I'm going to get into is keeping shrimp and fish together in the same tank. Uh, there's lots of ways to do this and there's a few benefits and a few disadvantages uh, depending on what you're trying to get out of it. Um, so you can, yeah, breed shrimp and fish together, you can just keep them in there if you want them to, you know, hang around together. Um, there's totally different ways of doing it. Um, a common way people, or common thing people do is put guppies and shrimp together. Uh, usually it's just cherry shrimp or neocaridina, nothing, you know, too expensive or anything that needs, you know, particular, um, I guess, substrate and whatnot. Uh, so, yeah, cherry shrimp and guppies is very common just because they're both very easy to breed and you can sell them. Um, it's a kind of easy way to make profit. Uh, I don't do it myself yet, but I am thinking about doing it. At the moment, I have a Blue Dream shrimp tank, a Better Fish tank, and a Cherry and Neon Tetras tank. Um, and they all do pretty well, but the Cherry and Neon Tetra one is probably doing the best. Uh, there's so many cherry shrimp. Um, so yeah, it's one way of keeping them. It's very good because you obviously, the fish get fed from the baby shrimp, but they don't eat all of them. Some baby shrimp survive. Uh, with neon tetras, I've never seen a neon tetra eat a baby shrimp, and there's a lot in there, and I don't know. It may have gone on, but, you know, one out of maybe 30 babies that gets eaten isn't so bad. Obviously, if you don't have any cover in the tank, um, they're more likely to get eaten. Uh, most things will eat baby shrimp. Uh, it's also sometimes a beneficial thing if you keep fish that need live food. Um, you can obviously just, you know, throw your cherry shrimp in there, let them breed up, and then the big fish will come through and munch them on down. Uh, it saves a bit of money, I guess. Um, but it is definitely doable, even with predatory fish, um, as long as there's so much cover, you know, they'll be fine. In my tank I have the massive mound of lava rock, and shrimp will hide in there and make heaps of babies, and the babies will come out and explore, and the adults will come out, um, and it's, yeah, pretty safe for them there. 
Uh, Java moss is a great protection from any fish, you know. Shrimp will just hide in that Java moss or any other moss really. And fish don't really go, you know, in there much unless they're fry or something. Um, so yeah, I do really like keeping fish and shrimp together. Uh, in a way, the shrimp clean up after the fish as well. If you drop food in and the food sinks to the bottom, uh, shrimp will come along and just munch it up. Um, so yeah, it's a really good combination, really big fan of it. Um, the downside, obviously, you're going to lose shrimp. So like I said before, you don't want to be keeping your higher grade shrimp or shrimp you're trying to breed um, that have you know good lines or anything with fish if you're trying to make profit or make more of them. Obviously, if you have nice looking shrimp and you want to put them in with the nice looking fish, go ahead. Um, but yeah, don't recommend it if you're trying to breed them. And last but not least is keeping fish on their own without shrimp. Uh, there's a few reasons you may have to do this or may want to do this. Um, you may want to do it if it's in a nice looking tank and you don't want, I guess, the uh, malted sheds of the shrimp. Even though they're nothing crazy like that stand out, they are little white skins of the shrimp, I guess or the shells that sit on the bottom after the shrimp shed. Um, you know, that's a very picky reason, but there's not many. Uh, another reason you may not be able to is obviously the fish is a predatory fish, like a Oscar, for example, that will just munch up a shrimp, like, any time it sees it anywhere near its mouth, you know. Uh, shrimp will <laughs> swim around a fair bit, or from my experience anyway, um, and if an Oscar sees that, they'll just gulp and it's gone. Um, there's other predatory fish and other fish that'll most likely eat them. Uh, I know better fish is a bit hit and miss. Some people have success, some people don't. Uh, for me personally, my better fish harasses the shrimp all the time and I'm not going to put any more in there. I put like three cherry shrimp in there to test it and there was no luck. I had to take them out and put them back into the main tank. And obviously, yeah, if you don't like shrimp and you don't want them in with your fish, fair enough, don't do it. So um, that's pretty much all I've got today. Uh, I have, I'm not able to use my camera at the moment as I broke my computer where I do all the editing. So I'm going to have to be using my phone again for a little bit, but I plan to get a new uh, computer going. So once that's done, I'll probably redo my tank, um, the big... A rectangle one and probably yeah see how that all goes um i do have some sad news as well uh if you didn't see my other video about bobby he was looking really sick and he didn't really make it through the night um i woke up in the morning around like i don't know 10 or something pretty late and looked in the tank and he wasn't there, he wasn't floating, so I went for a bit of more of a look and he wasn't on the bottom, he wasn't floating and he wasn't anywhere to be found. Uh, I went through, lifted up the log, lifted up the rocks and all that, had a good dig around and I could not find his body. So I'm not sure if it was the cherry shrimp that just ate him as soon as he died or if the neon tetras did or something, but he's not there, there's no body and I did a water change and there's no real sign of him uh, anywhere. So, yeah, I'm not sure. There's maybe maybe 50 cherry shrimp in there, so I don't know if that's enough to eat him overnight. or. But that's what happened. He's <laughs> vanished. Um, so it is pretty sad. I really did like him. All my family actually really liked him. Um, they used to, yeah, come over and have a look all the time. So... Yeah, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do there. Um, I will get another, I guess, centerpiece fish, and I'm going to get some more tetras, but I'll save that for the new tank. Um, I'm thinking of getting, like, ember tetras, and maybe, like, some kind of garami again. Um, I did like the garamis, but I'll have to look around a bit more, because, yeah, it depends on the size of the tank I get and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this video helped you out in finding out, you know, if you should keep your fish with shrimp. Um, I do, I do, I guess, three, all three of the different things. I have the better on its own, the blue dreams on their own, and then the mix. Uh, the blue dreams also have eggs and should have babies really soon. I'm really happy with that. 
Um, I did have a couple die off, but it's there's no more that are dying, so it seems to be all right. I'm not sure if that was just because I did the uh, yeah added them in incorrectly or something, but should be fine. Um, so I can't wait for some babies. I'll have a video when there are more babies. As I said, the cherry shrimp are just continuously breeding now, and the neon tetras are going well. Uh, everything's pretty good except for Bobby. So rest in peace, Bobby. Um, yeah, he was a good fish. I liked him. And I do think the balloon rams are a little neglected in the fish world. But yeah, thanks for watching. Comment below if this helped. Leave us a like and subscribe for more.